Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All, and in this video we're going to have a look at some sub D workflow theory. So in this video we're going to spend a bit of time talking about sub D, and I'm actually going to specifically talk about one element of this because otherwise it's just too large a topic, and that is how you can control your edges within sub D. And there are actually a couple of ways to do this. Well, three sort of will cover the third as well. And each one has its own positives and negatives to it. And it's really important to understand this so you can make decisions about what you're gonna do for certain projects and creating certain outcomes. And I'll need to do this to lead in some videos that people have requested so that when I go through these elements, I don't have to explain each bit individually. So what I'm gonna do is press control and three to subdivide both of these. We're gonna have a look at how we're going to create some sharper edges or some more specific edges on these objects. So the first method that we're going to do is we're going to go into edge mode and then what we're going to do is create some edge loops that are going to control these. So all we need to do is press control and R, click and we can drag an edge loop to control each of those edges. So we could do something for example there, there and then do similar things here and so on on each of those edges until you're done. And what this is gonna create is a nice rounded sort of cube, and you can control how round these edges are gonna look by just moving these edge loops. So I'm just clicking Alt and then GG and sliding down, and then we can do that with each of these edges as we choose to control how round they are. So a useful method here of being able to control each edge and how sharp we want it to look. The other method that's commonly used, again, if I go into edge mode, is to use, if I bring the end panel out and go to item, to use a crease. And you can see that here. So we can either drag this up and down and control the crease there. So for example, we're increasing and decreasing the crease, or we can just press shift and E, and that will allow us to move that around as much as we want. Now these have different positives and negatives to them that we need to be aware of. You'll notice that both of these have three levels of subdivision and this one, well, it looks a lot nicer than this one. For this one to look nice, we'd have to up the subdivision level and then we're gonna get a nice controlled look. Though I should say, it is probably slightly easier as a basic idea to control how rounded these edges look when we use our edge crease method. Now the other thing to be aware of at a basic level, I'm just gonna press N to get rid of the M panel, is that if I come over here and then apply this, and then come over here and then apply this, and then we go into vertex mode or edge mode for both of them, we can see some really noticeable differences. In fact, let's G and bring that across here. Now, obviously we started by upping this one with the edge crease to get this smoother edge. We could have done the same over here, but regardless of that, when we go into our edges, you will notice that because of this methodology that we chose, we're gonna end up with an overall denser mesh for this object. In fact, if I just go back enough, let's down that to five, so they look about similar, and then same thing, we'll just apply both of them. So that's a little bit more similar. Now, just some things to consider. The first one is, if you use this edge crease method, the main benefit of it is that it keeps the geometry really equally spaced. Even when you get to the curves, you will notice, if I just bring in my annotation tool, that each of these gaps is pretty much equal. And that is quite nice when you're doing a workflow with sub D, is that it means it's slightly easier to predict what's going on there. So that definitely has some positives. Whereas if we go into this one, you will notice that when you've got the edge loops that you've brought up, so we brought an edge loop up to around here, you'll notice that inside those edge loops, it then makes more confined geometry. So we get this spaced out and then it gets closer and closer and closer together. And then again, similar here on each of those edges. Again, that's not necessarily a problem. Bear in mind that these have relatively similar looks. If I come over here and put up my statistics, we can see in this object here, we've got about three and a half thousand vertices, whereas on this one here, we've got about 6,000 vertices to get a similar look. So notable increase in geometry using this edge crease method, but a more even geometry overall. So that's gonna depend what you want. Now I did mention that there was a third way of controlling your creases on edges or how much of an edge you've got. Now most people wouldn't count this, but I want to mention it. If I just come in and bring in a plane, we used this on a recent tutorial. Let's rotate that on the X axis by 90. If I go into edge mode and then E that out. We can actually use a different method to control our edge creases here, but this is only gonna work on the outside edges. And if I press control and three and come to advanced, we have this option here to use 
the boundary and we can click and that will keep the corners of this object so for example if I then E there we get this rounded edge here but effectively any vertex where you only have two points it keeps it nice and sharp so you'll notice for example this one if I move this along gets rounded so that works but it only works on planes you can't use that on an object that is three-dimensional or I should say has got a volume to it so let's go through some positives and negatives of these well the first one is if we think back to what we did with our edges or our edge loops this can be quite time consuming to do or people think it is it doesn't have to be if we come into this one go into edge mode what we can do instead of using that method of individually bringing in all the edge loops is if you've got machine tools and you've got smart edge turned on if you press control and two while you've got your edges selected it'll create what's called a korean bevel i don't think they actually call it any that anymore they've hidden that as a name option but effectively it is a bevel where you've got the shape as one now you don't need to have machine tools to do that if i just undo that if i come here and press control and b without that you'll notice you can if you just change it to three up your shape to one and it will have the same effect but machine tools is free and it's great so why wouldn't you Let's turn off those statistics. Now this is quite nice because, well, you don't have to select every single edge if you don't want. For example, I could just come into these edges here, control and two, put that in place, and then we go to object mode and control and three. We get our nice controlled edges, but this time just on one side. So that is definitely an option to this that speeds things up slightly. So that machine tools bevel is quite a nice time saver. Now, the other thing that's worth noting is that if you aren't wanting, let's just shift and D and bring that along so we've got another spare, if you are wanting this to only work on certain edges and you're wanting a completely hard edge, if I press Control and 3 again, go into edges and select these ones at the end, and then shift and E, if we bring that all the way to 1, and I'll just press N so we can see that that mean crease is 1, you could also change it down here afterwards if you wanted to, this is going to be a really efficient way of doing this if we want to have a perfectly sharp edge. And it does it without creating the extra geometry that we're going to have in here if we did this. We can also up this quite nicely to make it really smooth. So that's using the mean crease method. Now, there is one other thing that you should be aware with the mean crease, and it's probably biggest limitation as far as I'm concerned. If I try to do the same thing here, so we've got this nice smooth equal bevel around the edge. If we try to do this here, so let's control and three, and then come into edge mode, select those edges, and we're gonna press shift and E and do our mean crease, but we're not gonna go all the way to one. Even if I up this, you'll notice that we get this quite nasty looking sort of pinching here. And that is really something that's gonna be a bit disruptive for your geometry. It doesn't look very nice, and it doesn't give that overall smooth feel that you would get with this. However, there is one additional thing that is worth knowing, and that is that actually this edge crease method, you can use this pinching almost to your benefit. If I just rotate that round on the x-axis, this pinching technique does allow you, if I go into edge mode and select this edge and this edge, say, in fact, let's do all of those, is if you do want to have a specific effect, let's shift an E and drag that out, and you want to have this pinching where you have a nice, sharp edge and it gradually transforms into a less sharp edge here in fact let's go into the edges at the bottom and bring those perfectly flat as well you'll notice this can create a really nice sort of effect and it gets this really nice gradual change which you're not really able to do with the edge loop method because it's going to create engons and that will create its own problems so that is a positive of that if you want this nice gradually transitioning effect so Let's just sort these so they're all relatively in line with each other. And let's just quickly recap what we've gone through. I will say there's one other thing I'm gonna show you at the end of this, which is also a useful trick, so do stay around till the end. So if we just select these and have a quick look, just some ideas that are worth remembering. So we've got our methods of using edge loops on the left and our methods of using the mean crease on the right. The edge loop method does create a bunching up of vertices, whereas the mean crease method creates a more equal geometry all across your shape. But that is at the expense if you're going to create some rounded edges where you end up with more geometry. So that is definitely a problem with that for certain machines and depending on what you want to do. But then using the edge crease method has a tendency to create 
better object if you want to have an entirely sharp edge like we've got on this second one down. And in that instance, it's actually going to be reducing the geometry overall. So you'll actually end up with a better effect there and lower geometry. However, if you want an object with a bevel, but not all edges being beveled, like our third one down, that does have a tendency to create pinching. But our bottom one, we can see that actually sometimes that pinching can be used to our benefit if we want to create those interesting transitions. Whereas our edge loop method can also be well, speed it up by using the beveling method that I showed you using machine tools, but it also gives you control over each of the edges individually, but that can cause you problems if you do create engons, and then you'll get a similar pinching where you would get a smoother shape if you used an edge crease. One final thing that I wanted to mention, which actually uses neither of these techniques as well, is if you are wanting to make a single shape with just rounded edges, so you can just bevel in a normal way, though I will say I've got that still as one, so let's change that to 0 0.5. But if you do want something where you want to have a little bit more of a transitioned effect, you'll notice this goes quite sharply into that now curved shape. You can actually do something else, which is if you bring in a cube, what you can do instead is to add a subdivision surface modifier. Let's bring that up to let's say two, change it to simple so it won't affect any of the edges at all. And then what you can then do is add in a second subdivision surface modifier, which isn't simple, and that will then round those edges. And when you apply this, it's gonna create an even mesh similar to our one that we'd create using our edge crease method. But then if we change the levels on our lower subdivision, we can control how smooth the edges are. And if we use the one where we've got our simple method, you can control the size of the bevel. So that's a quite nice go between. And if I just apply all of those, you can see what that does, but that will create a very dense mesh. So again, positives and negatives. So nothing revolutionary there in terms of how to make a different object. As I said, I am going to do some videos on that. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you get notified about that and hit that bell icon. But hopefully that's going to be useful in terms of knowing the positives and negatives of different methods of edge control when using a subdivision surface modifier. And if you did find that useful, hitting that like button would be really appreciated as it means YouTube's more likely to share the video around. And if you want to support the channel further, there is a Patreon page and any contributions there are massively appreciated. Have a great day, guys.